In this video, we are going to be learning how to solve more complicated logarithmic problems that will not require the use of a calculator. If you are ever given an exam where they say, do not use a calculator in this problem, that is because this problem is 100% solvable without a calculator. So let's start very simple. So we mentioned in the previous video that if the argument of the log is the same as the base, it will always be equal to one because five raised to the one is five in this example. We also talked about whatever the base is, if the argument is one, the answer will always be equal to zero. Because remember, the solution to a logarithm is the exponent. So anything raised to zero will always be one. Any base raised to zero will always be one. Very important to understand that. Now, let's take slightly more complicated problems. Let's take, for example, log base five of 25. Once again, what we are solving for is the exponent that we need to raise five so that, is, so that it is equal to 25. The answer would have to be two because five squared is 25. If this still confuses you slightly, there's another way to approach this, which is to rewrite the problem as an exponent. Because if you understand exponential equations better, rewriting a logarithm as an exponential equation, which as we mentioned before is exactly the same thing, it may make it easier to solve the problem. So for example, this has to be equal to some exponent. I, like, I personally like to use x to represent that exponent that I'm looking for. You can really use any other character or letter that you want to use. You can use question mark, you can use n to represent a number, you can use x, y, whatever you want to use. I personally like to use x. So I'm trying to figure out what is that exponent, the x, that I want to raise 5 to so that it's equal to 25. So 5 raised to x is equal to 25. Once again, x is the solution to this problem. I'm trying to figure out what I have to raise 5 to so that it's equal to 25. And then you just have to realize, well, 25 is just 5 squared. So using mathematical logic, if 5 raised to the x is equal to 5 squared, that means the exponent has to be 2. Therefore, the answer is because five squared is 25. Let's show, let me show you guys some slightly more complicated problems with other rules that we need to use. There is, for example, log base three of one over three. Okay? So we are trying to figure out the exponent that I have to raise three so that it is equal to one over three. Therefore, I, again, I'm gonna use x to represent my unknown value, which is the exponent. So three raised to what is equal to one third. So if I can get both sides of this equal sign to be exactly the same base, then all I have to do is compare the exponents. Now, a very important exponential rule you have to understand is negative exponents because one over three is equal to three raised to the negative one. Therefore, that means the exponent has to be negative one because three raised to the negative one is one third. Now let me show you a similar type of problem, but just a tiny bit more complicated. Let's say here we wanted to do log base two of one over four. So again, we're trying to figure out what do I have to raise two so that it's equal to one over four. So two raised to what? Again, that what is what I'm solving for, is the exponent. Remember, because the solution to a logarithm is the exponent. 
So 2 raised to what is equal to 1 over 4? So once again, what I like to do is my goal is to get both sides of this equation to have the same exact base. Therefore, well, 4 I know I can convert to 2 squared because 2 squared is 4. So I'm saying the same thing. I'm still saying 1 over 4. But knowing the rule about negative, log negative exponents, I could say that this is 2 raised to the negative 2. So see, if you work backwards, it should make sense. 2 raised to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. Therefore, the exponent is negative 2. Remember, x, if 2 raised to the x is equal to 2 raised to the negative 2, that means x has to be negative 2, because 2 raised to the negative 2 is 1 over 4. Now we're going to move on to our last main type of logarithmic problem that may show up, which is when you have radicals. So in this problem, again, you are trying to solve for the exponent that I need to raise 5 to so, the, so that it is equal to the third root of 5. So 5 raised to what is equal to the third root of 5? Well, if you remember, a radical or a root is an exponent. So third root means 5 raised to the 1 third. Therefore, if 5 raised to the x is equal to 5 raised to the 1 third, it has to be true that x is 1 third. Because 5 raised to the 1 third is the third root of 5. So the exponent, the solution to the logarithm, is 1 third. Let's do another similar type of problem, but once again, just elevated a little bit. Let's take a look at this example here. So we are trying to find out what is the exponent that we need to raise 3 to so that it is equal to the square root of 27. So once again, I am searching for this x. I am searching for the exponent, the unknown. I need to raise 3 to so that it is equal to the square root of 27. Now, 27. Again, the goal for this type of problem is to make these the same base. 27, I know, is 3 cubed. So 27, I could just rewrite this as 3 cubed. I'm still saying square root of 27. I just rewrote 27 to be base 3. But now, if you remember, square root means raised to the 1 half. Therefore, this means 3 cubed divided by 2. Therefore, the exponent has to be 3 over 2. Because remember, the square root means 1 half, and 3 cubed is 27. Therefore, if you work backwards, 3 raised to the third to 3 divided by 2 means the square root of 3 cubed, which is the square root of 27. So see, all you're doing here is really just working backwards from an exponent. You are trying to go from a solved problem going all the way back to rewriting it in an exponential form that shares the same base. So that all you have to do is compare the exponents. Let's do one problem here that combines all these rules together. So let's do log base 5 of 1 over the 7th root of 25. So you see this, and it may seem intimidating. But once again, this is a no calculator problem. Therefore, when a teacher says no calculator, it's implied that this problem can be solved without a calculator, 100%. And all you have to do is manipulate this, and you have to rewrite the problem so that they share the same exact base. Both sides of the exponential equation share the same base. So I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent. 
So once again, I'm trying to figure out what do I have to raise 5 to so that it is equal to 1 over the 7th root of 25. So let's break this down step by step. First thing I know here is that 25, in order to make it the same base, well, 25 is just 5 squared. So this is 1 over the 7th root of 5 squared. So notice here the equal sign still works. I'm still saying 7th root of 25, but I'm one step closer to getting these to have the same exact base. Next step I would take is, well, I know the 7th root means raised to the 1 over 7. So if I have 5 squared raised to the 1 over 7, that has to be 5 raised to the 2 sevenths. Therefore, the final step here is I know that a negative exponent turns the problem into a fraction. So that means this has to be 5 raised to the negative 2 sevenths. So if 5 raised to the x is equal to 5 raised to the negative 2 sevenths, that means the exponent x is negative 2 over 7. And that is the exponent. Now you see 5 raised to negative 2 over 7 is equal to 1 over 7th root of 25. You can prove that by working your way backwards. And if you look at the work, just go backwards. See 5 raised to negative 2 over 7 is 1 over 5 raised to the 2 over 7, which is 1 over the 7th root of 5 squared, which is equal to 1 over the 7th root of 25 which is exactly the same thing. So your logic should make sense. You're just working backwards. That's what makes it hard, learning to think backwards. But once you master that, logs should come a lot easier. There's one more type of problem that we may have, where notice in the problems I've given before, the base was smaller than the argument. But let's say here that now, the base is bigger than the argument. That means that the exponent is going to have to be less than one, meaning that the exponent is going to be a radical. Take, for example, this problem, log base four of two. So what do I have to raise four so that it's equal to two? So notice here how I rewrote this as an exponential equation. Now I'm trying to figure out what do I have to raise four so that it is equal to two? It does not make for x to be a number greater than one. So it's gonna have to be some number less than one, meaning a fraction most likely. So in this case, you really have two options here. You can go, again, your goal is to make both the bases the same. So you can either bring 4 down to 2 or 2 up to 4. So method 1 would be to bring 4 down to base 2. Now I know 4 is 2 squared. So 2 squared raised to the x means 2 raised to the 2x. See, I'm still saying 4 raised to the x, but instead... I rewrote this. Now these have the same base. So 2 raised to the 2x has to be 2 raised to the 1. So 2x has to be 1. So x is equal to 1 half. And there we go. Which makes sense because the square root of 4 is 2. So the answer is 1 half. Method 2, which you may like better is to bring 2 up to base 4. And you may realize, well, that 2 is just the square root of 4, which is 4 raised to the 1 half. So that one kind of maybe saves some work. But at the end of the day, you get the same answer, 1 half. Because 4 raised to the 1 half means the square root of 4, which is 2. So this is the other type of question that may come about. So other than that, these questions can get really tricky, but at the end of the day, just use these basic rules that we went over um, and just apply them to any crazy looking problems that you may run across. Okay, so 
take some time to solve these logarithmic problems. Now, before you do, let me just give you a reminder for number five and six. If you remember from the previous video, that log without a base is not a mistake. That is the common log. That means base 10. So just remember for number five, this is log base 10. And for number six, ln is the natural log, which means log base E. So I put those there to be a little bit tricky, but give them a try. Just remember log, the common log does not have the, the base is 10, but we don't have to write the 10. And the natural log is base E, and we write it as ln instead. So other than that, give these eight problems a try. Pause this video and I will show the answers in five seconds. Now that you have the answers, if you made any mistakes, try to go back and realize what the mistake may have been. If you need to, go back through this video and see if you could figure out what the mistake could have been. So thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.